With the recent crash of the Terra ecosystem, we saw the Luna token drop from the top 10 list of biggest cryptocurrencies in the world by more than 99% within the matter of only hours. Also, Luna's stablecoin, the UST, which was supposed to be always picked and worth one US dollar, also faced similar faith. The consequence of this crash will, according to my humble opinion, lead to more regulation within the cryptocurrency space. Now, of course, all this in the name of protecting you and I. I think now is the time to talk about the future of money. That is the central bank digital currency. The CBDC is going to be centralized, regulated, permissioned, censored, programmable and 100% traceable and trackable. But before we start, I want to welcome you to Crypto Never Sleeps. And in case you're new to this channel, well then please hit like, smash, subscribe so that you can be notified every time we upload new videos. My name is Nico Harachi and I'm the host of Crypto Never Sleeps. And if there's one thing I love, it is to be independent. You see, I believe there are two things in this world worth fighting for. The first one is freedom of speech. The second is financial freedom. And also since our early youth, most of us, we have been taught that achieving financial freedom will allow us to be truly independent. Now, for me, financial freedom means having enough money to do whatever I please. Quit my job, travel around the world full time, focus on my hobbies like my little YouTube channel here, and subsequently stay home and play with my kids. Whatever brings me a you joy. You see, you should control your money instead of letting money control you. Money is only supposed to be a tool human beings can use to positively influence their own destiny and the destiny of your kids. Unfortunately though, there's never been a time in history where we the people have had so little power or control over our own money. Central banks, government regulations and a controlling financial system means that most people exist in a system that's not controlled by them, a system that they have almost no power to change or influence. A system that so clearly favor those at the top or the people behind the curtain or the elite, call them as you like. But what if I was to tell you that this is going to get even worse? And what if you were about, or all of us, about to lose the final piece of control that we have over our own financial freedom. And this last piece of the puzzle seems to be something that's going to come to your country very soon. And it seems to be the biggest change that we are going to see in how we are going to spend or how we are able to spend our own money. See, the future monetary system is being built right in front of our eyes and it's being built on the blockchain. However, this new technology seems to be just a few years away, and this is at best. And it seems that not so many people are even aware, about, aware of it or know about it. The CBDC will ultimately give the government powers of your own money. And this has never existed in history before. So the question is, is this just the evolution of technology? Or is this a technology that is really going to be helpful for the majority of humanity to achieve financial freedom? Or is it in fact just a tool to prevent true financial freedom? So I'm going to share with you how you can possibly protect yourself from what is coming. I hope you're going to enjoy this little video and explore with me this potentially terrifying future. And maybe how you and I, we can prevent it. But before we talk about the not too distant future, I want to talk about what is happening right now and what is happening in China. As it illustrates my worries of what could be happening to our money very, very soon. You see, privacy is likely the biggest concern with the digital one. Remember, we're in China now. The government has and will have complete visibility across the transaction flow. As the Chinese government likes to call it, controlled anonymity. Digital wallets run by private companies store con customer data, which the Chinese government then can access. But with the digital one, there is no third party involved. The data is housed with the government. 
and payers are currently required to provide their national ID before paying in the digital one. So the digital one is also programmable and it can set can be programmed to only to be used for payments after activation. So when certain predefined conditions are met, then you are allowed to spend your money, your E1 wallet. So you see the E1 is not as much about currency. It's all about data and control. And this kind of program programmability can allow the government to more aggressively control behaviors and enforce compliance. The government can set an expiration date for the digital ones in your pocket, in your wallet, I'm sorry, or perhaps wipe out an account's cash balance for companies or individuals found not to be in compliance with the government regulations or rules or laws. You see, the government will ultimately hold the key to the cash box. Currently, however, in China, the government can enforce compliance by restraining cash repatriation outside of China, meaning there's a limited amount of people they can take out of China. But with the digital one, the digital currency is going to make this much easier to prevent because they can do this without <clears throat> having border control, immigration, simply by programming the digital currency, the E1, it can be programmed that as soon as you cross the border, you cannot use the mini. So now let's talk about the CBDC and where it came from. Well, it came from the BIS. Headquartered in Basel, Switzerland, the Bank for International S Settlements, also known as the BIS, is a bank for central banks, as I like to call it, the mother of all central banks, which was founded in 1930. Now, the Bank for International Settlements, they have already developed prototypes for a common digital currency platform that has the potential to make cross-border payments much more efficient. Codenamed Project Dunbar, the development also proves that financial institutions could use central bank digital currencies to transact directly with one another on a shared platform, reducing the need for intermediaries and cutting costs and time. And just recently, the BIS unveiled a proposal for all global central banks to implement what they call central bank digital currency and as already referred to in this video many times as the CBDC. CBDCs are in fact digital currencies just like the cryptocurrencies many of us already know and use today. Coins like Bitcoin, Ether or Dogecoin. You see, the CBDC would work the same way that crypto does and that they would be a total digital form of money. But one of the favorite things that people love about cryptocurrency is that it is decentralized. It is the power in people's hands because they choose how they save it, use it, spend it and obviously trade it. But with the CBDC, it wouldn't be the same. Not at all. Just the way that our governments, your government controls your country's money and is responsible for creating and managing it, they would also control and issue a CBDC. So unlike cryptocurrencies, the CBDCs would not be decentralized. It would in fact be a centrally controlled, organized and regulated by your government, just like any other type of money so far. So basically, the CBDC would take the biggest positive of crypto and would get rid of it. Throw it away, send it to Portugal. And so the control would no longer be in the people's hands. It would be given back to the government, where they would regulate it and also be under the influence of some of the most powerful people and corporations in the world. It would no longer be decentralized and it would no longer be a tool of the people. I, in fact, would argue that I don't think we need any more people governing our destinies or our money. But you see, the thing is, this isn't even the worst thing about the CBDC, which I will talk about in a minute. But first, I want to talk about how close we may be to this becoming a reality in our world. Now, most people haven't even heard about CBDCs yet, but chances are that they are coming to your country very soon. 
are very big. I like to follow the Atlantic Council and you can see here on your screen that shows that all the countries that are currently testing a CBDC or who have already started implementing them. And already you can see it's a lot and the number of countries are growing fast. Now, when Mr. August, the managing director from the Bank for International Settlements and Sister Kristalina from the IMF managing director announced their proposals to create CBDCs in countries such as the UK, US, Germany and many other countries around the world, they used really beautiful words in order to describe this new kind of monetary system. Words like safety, security, privacy, and inclusion. So when you listen and look at sweet sleepy Mr. August and sweet sister Kristalina, I mean, you think they are promoting the evolution of technology, something good, right? So we should all welcome the CBDCs with open arms. However, there is a word that's often linked to CBDCs that not many people seem to want to talk about. And it's a word that would grant governments permissions to do things with money they've previously not been able to do. And that word is programmable. Programming your money. You see, a CBDC would be programmable, meaning that just like a piece of software, the government would be able to put restrictions on it with digital rules. And this would give them an immense amount of financial power over you. Power that, I will say, is a little bit terrifying. So let me show how this could potentially play out and provide you with a few hypothetically examples in order to illustrate my point. Now believe it or not, but in times of economic hardship, just like we are experiencing now, your government doesn't want you to save money. They want you to spend it because when you spend money, it stimulates the economy and it makes money flow. So what if they could force you to spend your money? Think about that for a minute. Because I'm living in Ukraine and I have experienced this already. As we saw the new uh, COVID vaccines being implemented, it was already in an app, in a wallet, where each individual resident in Ukraine would be paid around $30 in worth of the local currency. But they will only be able to spend that money on designated shops. Now, I do not know if they had a, a time period that they had to spend it within, but certainly they could control where the money was spent. So after this example, with a CBDC, that would be possible. Your government could program, will program your money to expire, meaning you would have a time limit to spend it. If it's not spent within a given time frame, for example, within 30 days, the money in your account would simply just disappear. Obviously, you wouldn't want your money to expire or disappear, right? So because of this expiration date, you would go out and you would spend it instead of keeping it as worthless. Basically, you're being forced to take the action your government wants you to take. So with a CBDC, it doesn't matter if you decided that you want to save your money or not because that decision would already be in the hands of the government. The idea of expiring money isn't actually hypothetical. Just last month in China, they rolled out their own form of digital currency and they have been testing the expiration of money. But if that is not already, let's say, concerning enough, what if your government wanted to control the types of things you buy? Well, as I just gave you an example with Ukraine, with the CBDC, this is very possible and being implemented. So let's jump over to something slightly different, a lot different, carbon emissions. You see, we all know that the world or the world's governments, they're currently obsessed with carbon emissions, right? And of course, it is great that we should care about our env environment. You know, I'm all about going green, right? I might just look at my green screen. Well, very soon, personal carbon allowances are likely to become a thing in the current life we're going to live in. Meaning that just like big companies, individual people, just like you and I, we will be limited to an amount of carbon that, <laughs> that we'll be allowed to put out every month. 
Now with a CBDC, a government could program your money so that you cannot buy fuel or plane tickets or even non-green foods and groceries because you would spend too much carbon or let too much carbon emission out. So once you hit your monthly carbon limit, your money would simply not be able to leave your wallet. So basically your government will be able to completely control the things you can or cannot buy by programming your money. Now apart from carbon, I am sure that your, our government would have a whole bunch of reasons as to how and why they would be able to control your spending habits. In the end of the day, they are only protecting you and me. So though I would honestly prefer to live in a world where I get to choose what it is that I can and cannot buy. And when I choose to do so, I do not need some government body looking over my shoulder. Neither do I need to have a bad conscience if I want to drink a beer or, or, or buy a little bit more of this and that, because it could obviously um, decrease my credit ratings, right? So it's another thing that's coming in the future that based on the things that we will buy, the things that we read, it is all trackable. If you drink too many beers, too many Bahama Mamas, well, you're not fit for category A credit, for example. Anyway, I am sure that there's a whole bunch of you that would probably agree with me, right? So let's go on to the last example, because I want to share on how CBDC could be used in order to restrict further personal freedoms. And you see, early in this video, I didn't just use China as some abstract example. I actually believe that China's rules may be coming to the rest of the world. So as I mentioned, China is one of the world's leaders in creating digital currencies and digital programmable laws. But they're also a world leader already in censorship and punishing their citizens for stepping outside the lines. We're talking about freedom of speech. In China, saying negative things about the government or taking part in protests can already result in a citizen's rights being taken away. And the Chinese government already blocks some of these people from being able to buy train tickets, plane tickets, or even being able to get a passport. You see, I believe being able to travel or to get a passport, these are basic human rights. But with the CBDC, our, your government, would have the power to restrict you from these basic things. And this is happening in China today. There are plenty more examples that I could give you here, but this video is already getting long. But hopefully these points are already illustrating what is possible and how CBDCs could be used in order for governments to control your money, your life, or let's say how they can protect our good citizens. And now in the two past examples or reference, I have been talking about China. And I'm sure that a few of you, or maybe all of you, you're thinking, well, that's China, right? That is China. Just like I'm living in Ukraine and we just recently had the war. Man, I never thought that it would come to Ukraine. And if I was living in China, I would think that's Ukraine. By the way, let's see what's going to happen with China and Taiwan. But that's a different video. You probably think that's China and China has always been a little bit stricter than the rest of the world. Well, I think it's going to happen across the globe. And of course, I'm not going to have such financial restrictions at my doorstep, right? Well, you better think again. So let's go to a Western example, Canada, right? The truck drivers. And in Canada, I think we had the prime minister and they already spoken about removing travel privileges and driver's licenses from people who have been taking part in the protests. And also the Canadian government already limiting people from being able to access their own money. People who are disagreeing with their government. And not only that, but just a few years ago, the Canadian government also said, or the prime minister, that he admires China's leadership. And this is pretty serious, isn't it? So we are seeing same, same, but different, different. So as you can see, this is the stuff that is already happening in the West. So how much longer until it's going to get worse? How much longer until countries such as Canada 
or perhaps the US, the UK, the European Union are going to start using CBDCs in order to restrict people's financial freedoms. Or simply taking away your access to your own money because you disagree with your government. I think something that a lot of us often disagree with. I mean, I don't agree with many, many, many governments or I don't even agree with Kitty here. But I wouldn't like just because I disagree that they would have the power to shut my wallet. And what about them restricting, I'm talking about the government, restricting your ability to buy whatever you choose to buy? I think that this is only a matter of time. Only time will tell. But if this doesn't really sound like fun or appealing, this doesn't sound like a future that you would like to live in or participate in, is there a solution that could solve it? I would like to talk a little bit about it, but I gotta honestly say, this has to happen from within. You see, most of the Western governments, they are in fact still democratic elected. So you better go and vote next time. But before we get any further, if you do think that this is important and more people should know about my little video, well then you know what to do. Hit like, smash and comment and share it around because we are anyway the littlest crypto channel on the interweb. Let's talk about the potential solution. Look, it's very possible that CBDCs could be used as a tool for good and it could help us make our lives with money just a little bit easier. And there is the argument that is being used that CBDCs could help to eliminate the illegal activity that is happening within the land of cryptocurrencies. But by one way of looking at it, crypto is used by criminals far less than normal money is today. So the argument that crypto is only for shady business may not exactly be true. We already have digital currencies that allow us to use and store our own money. And the best part about them is that it is decentralized, meaning that the power is in your, in our own hands. And we get to decide what to do with our own money rather than having some government tell us how we can use our own money. So it seems that we are already or that we already have a solution for a secure, safe and inclusive way of using money to date. Something that basically all of us can have access to right now. So when I think about it in this way, I can't help but to think that the only reason why governments want to have CBDCs is so that they can, could have extra power and control over our money and subsequently over our lives and potentially to shape our future the way that they want to shape our future slash their future. So to me, there is one very simple solution. When inevitably the CBDC will come to your country or a country near you and the government starts promoting it as a beautiful tool that we should all use, and that we should all appreciate. Don't just simply refuse to use it but concentrate on ways that are already existing on how you can store and use your own money. It is going to be a transition. So until it is fully implemented, you could use cash or existing forms of electronic banking, or maybe also explore the possibilities of crypto. So more people adopt this. In short, a vote with your wallet, a vote with a kind of money that still allows you to have the power in your own hands instead of handing it over to people, organizations, corporations that already have enough power. Sometimes I know it can feel like we don't have any power above or over our own future. And it feels like we're stuck in a system where we have zero control over the outcome. However, I do feel that when we come together, we have so much more power than they lead us to believe. We need to use that power and make decisions in our daily life that will guide us towards a beautiful future that we deserve and that our children deserve. A future that will benefit all of us and not the one that benefits them.